disappeared off the face of the earth. They well, outsource their old ways and they become old bad habits. Well, that was their relationship. How to make the bottom line look better. There's a lot of people that are stressed now at the company. They're probably downsizing, white sizing. How to get my arms around all this information. It seems like every day there's some. Very well done. Get it first. Environment, then they couldn't have the freedom to do what they want. There is a lot more competition. We want to invest in people. Job security is going out the door. Keys to success are the people. It takes a lot more than just putting in 12 hours of work to relocate and stay The world is changing. Take chances. Reading production schedules and inventory get out of control. You're always suspicious. With technology advancement, you're operating really from the seat of your pants. Tap into that market or into that Okay. Corporations are fragmented. People come, people go, you invest in Take chances. I think that the global market's getting much smaller, much more intertwined. Uh, every, everything that we look at has some global connection. They manage their houses productively. Race, which used to be won by the biggest, is now going to be won by the fastest. Everything is changing. And not only is it changing, but it's changing at an accelerated rate. You have the challenge here, and then you have the response that's equal to it. That equals success. But then you have a new challenge up here. The old successful patterns, processes, practices no longer work. Nothing fails like success. It requires an entirely new kind of response. What's the nature of the new challenge today? It's permanent whitewater. It's constant churning, changing environment. So it necessitates having a response that does not change. I love the analogy of a rowing crew on a beautiful lake that's quiet and placid to illustrate the difference between the nature of the leadership required today compared to the leadership that is required in the past. I mean, in the rowing crew, in a sense, the uh, coxswain would sit in the back of the boat and essentially give out the orders and the people would adapt and he would adjust. But on a turbulent whitewater situation, everyone has to have something inside them about what are we trying to do? What are the principles that are operating here? Because if you try to manage them, they can't even hear you for the noise, the roar. And they have to have it inside them. I suggest there are only three constants. One is change. Two is principles. And three, choice. The power that you and I have to adapt to the other two constants. The greatest need we have in this whitewater world, this permanent whitewater world, is something that does not change, a changeless core. If people have principles at their center so that it's a changeless core, it gives them the capacity to deal with the dynamic changes that surround them. That's the whole concept of the nature of leadership today is that the more you can get people committed to a common vision, a common purpose, and a common set of principles, and they already have it inside them, then the leadership work has been done. And that's what the concept of principle-centered leadership is, is that you get principles into the heart and minds of people, and then into their culture. Then that begins to permeate and affect all other relationships. That's what has permanent strength and viability, so that it gives people at the center of an organization and in the center of their hearts and souls a sense of direction. <laughs>